Doing some more review for our first semester final in geometry today. Today, in this video, we're talking about slope, our different types of equation forms, for example, point slope, slope intercept, and standard form, uh, as well as graphing a few lines and then classifying some angle pairs. All right, so in the video player down below, you can drag the bar to whichever parts you need, but let's get into it. All right, guys, once again, like in past videos, I'm going to put the number of the problem from the review packet that this is for my students. If you're not one of my students, you can still absolutely do these problems. This first one here asks us to find the slope of the line that passes through the two points, 7, 2, and negative 4, 10. All right, so we have two ordered pairs. What we need to use is the slope formula, which says this, m, or slope, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, that's the slope formula. And what we have to do with our two points is label those, right? This is an x, y point, and so is this, x, y. However, I'm gonna call my first one x1, y1, and my second point is just gonna get twos, x2, y2. And it's just a matter of throwing that into our formula, solving it, or simplifying it, and that will be the slope, okay? So for this first one, y2 is 10. So I'm gonna say equals 10. And then the formula says minus, so my y1 is two over, and then x2 minus x1, well here x2 is negative four, minus my x1 is seven. And if I simplify this, 10 minus two is eight, negative four minus seven is negative 11, which that cannot simplify anymore. I guess if you wanted to, you could put your negative out front and just say this is negative eight elevenths, like that. All right guys, this next question asks us to write an equation of a line in the following forms, right? Point, slope, slope, intercept, and standard form. Um, that goes through the point zero, negative three, and has a slope of negative one sixth, okay? So we're gonna start in point slope because they give us a point and a slope. In fact, this kind of like my last problem is an x, y point, and there's only one of those, so I'm gonna call it x1, y1. And of course, this is my slope. We use the letter M when we talk about slope when writing lines. So if I take those things and put into point slope form, it will look like, well, first off, point slope form looks like this, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. All right, so if I take those and put it in here, this is now y minus my y1, y minus a negative three equals the slope that I want, negative one sixth times x minus my x1 is zero. Now you can simplify this a little bit farther before I call it good for point slope. And that is to say y minus a negative three is y plus three. All right, and then negative one sixth, I can distribute it into that set of parentheses to become negative one sixth x, negative one sixth times zero isn't anything, so I can leave it like this for point slope form. Now, once you have a point slope, then you can go to slope intercept very easily by solving for y, right? Remember, slope intercept is the form y equals mx plus b, so the y is isolated. So over here, I'm gonna take what I currently have, y plus three equals negative one sixth x, and to solve for y, I just have to subtract three to the other side. All right, just like that, they're gonna cancel on the left side, y equals negative one sixth x minus three. I'll tack on the minus three there at the end. And again, this is in the form y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. Lastly, in standard form, we need three things. We need no fractions, we need the x and the y on the same side of the equation, as well as one of those x's, the x term, to be positive. All right, so if I, again, take what I currently have, y equals negative one sixth x minus three, and first off, to get rid of fractions, we can multiply the entire thing by whatever is in our denominator of our fraction. Or if you have multiple denominators, you can multiply those two things together. In this case, though, I just have one, so I'm gonna multiply our entire equation by that six. And when I distribute six into all three parts, that gets me six y equals, and then I chose six because here I'm multiplying and dividing by six, so it's gonna cancel, leave me with negative one x, or just negative x, and then six times negative three is negative 18. Okay, now that's my first step. Remember, I needed those three things. So now I need x and y on the same side. I can do that by adding x over. This gives me x plus 6y. Typically, you write the x first. So x plus 6y, the x's cancel on the right side equals negative 18. All right, and then the last step is that our x term has to be positive. In this case, it is already, right? This is positive x. If it wouldn't be positive, if you'd move it over um, by subtracting it or something, then you get a negative x. You could multiply the entire equation by a negative one. Just like up here, you multiply it all by six, and here, multiply it by negative one. That would switch it to be positive. But in this case, it already is positive, so we can leave it like this for standard form. 
All right, the next couple problems, we're gonna do some graphing here, all right? I have, again, my three different uh, types of equations like I had in the last problem. I have point slope, slope intercept, and standard form, all right? So if we look at this first one, this is in point slope. Again, this is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. The reason I wrote the form up there is because you can actually pull out a point and then a slope, that's how you're gonna graph it in point slope form. So here my point is the x1, y1, which in this case, I need my x1 to be uh, this kind of three part right here, all right? And you actually use the opposite sign from what you're given. So instead of a positive three, my x1 is negative three. Same thing for the y, you're gonna use the opposite sign, and instead of a negative two, it's actually a positive two, because the formula goes y minus by one. So we're actually minusing two here. And so I can write the point, or I can graph the point, negative three, two, here on my x, y plane. So negative three is back one, two, three. Two is up one, two, just like this. And then the slope is right in front of your set of parentheses. In this case, negative four. Or if I want that as a fraction for rise over run, I can say negative four over one. So in this case, I have to go from my dot that I drew, because it has to go through that point. I'm going to go down four and to the right one. So down one, two gets me back to the x-axis, and then three, four, and over one, like this. And you're just gonna connect those two dots, all right, and make a line. That line right there is the graph of that equation. All right, the next one is in y equals mx plus b form, or slope-intercept form. Again, y equals mx plus b. Here you're gonna start at the b. The b stands for the y-intercept. In this case, the y-intercept, it's intercepting the y at one. So up at one, put a couple dots there. Uh, up at one, I'm gonna put a dot right there. And then again, the M is the other piece of information that's not an X or a Y. In this case, our M, our slope is negative four thirds. So I'm gonna go down four and to the right three from this dot. So down one, uh, gets me back to the X axis. One, two, three, four, over one, two, three. Down four over three from this dot and should look something Let's see, kind of like, oops, kind of like that, all right? If you have a straight edge, you can maybe use that. I don't, all right? And then lastly, 31, this is in standard form. Standard form is a little bit different. Here you're gonna use the intercepts, both X and Y intercepts to graph um, this equation. And to do that, you'll notice whenever um, I have on the X axis, my Y value is zero, right? I don't, I'm not up or down at all on the x, and same thing for the y value on the y axis, my x value is zero. So to do that, to graph this, I can actually plug in zero for x to find the y, and that's kind of like you're covering it up, right? Three times zero is just gonna go away if you plug in zero. And so when I plug in zero here, what I'm left with is negative four, oops, negative four y equals 12. And likewise, when I plug in zero for y, what I'm left with is kind of this term that's gone, and that's negative three x equals 12. Or, I'm sorry, not negative three x, positive three x equals 12. This is just a matter of solving those. So what times three would give you 12? Well, that'd be four. So on the x axis, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and you're gonna put a dot. If you wanna solve that, you can say x equals four here. On this one, y would equal negative three. Okay, so on the y, you'd also go down one, two, three, because it's a negative three put a dot, and then those two dots are what you're gonna to use to graph your line. Just like that, all right? So we have point slope form, slope intercept form, and standard form for graphing. All right, guys, last topic for this video. We have this kind of hashtag looking shape with these different angles numbered over here, and they ask us to classify the angle pairs. And we have these um, six different angle pairs that we need to classify, all right? So let's look at what we first have. We have one and nine. So if I look at one and nine, these are both in kind of the, um, the top left portion of their intersection. Those are called corresponding angles. Okay, next we have eight and 13. Uh, let's see, eight and 13. So if you look at kind of the, uh, the, the line that is connected to both eight and 13, it's this line right here, right? That's the only line that touches both eight and 13. And then we have these other two that also touch them. Compared to those other two, eight and 13 are on the inside of it, all right? They're on the inside. They're also on the same side of the line they touch. So that's called consecutive interior angles. Interior, because they're on the inside, consecutive because they're on the same side. All right, next we have six and 16. 
6 and 16, right here, 6 and 16. Again, they're both touching that same line from before, but this time they're on the outside of those other two lines and on opposites of the same line that they're touching. So that's called alternate exterior. Alternate because they're on opposite sides, exterior because they're on the outside of those two lines. All right, next couple of, of angles we have is 4 and 10. Uh, let's see, 4 is right here and 10 is right here. So this time they're touching this line and they're on the inside of those, but again on opposite sides, so it's alternate interior. Alternate because they're on the opposite side of the same one they touch. Interior, they're on the inside of the two that kind of are on their uh, flanks like that. Okay, next we have 8 and 16. Let's see here, 8 and 16, again, these are both in like the bottom left of their respective intersections. And so this is again, corresponding angles. All right, and then the last one is 10 and 13. Uh, 10 is right here, 13 is right here. Um, they're both along this line. They're both on the inside of the other two that they touch and the same side of the one of the line that they're both next to. So since they're on the same side, on the inside, that's consecutive interior. All right, real quick, a couple other uh, special angles that aren't listed out that you might want um, to know is like, for example, two and four. Those are called vertical angles whenever they're on the opposite of the X type shape like that. And then one more is five and six. Five and six form a linear pair when they're on the same side of the line, but they're right next to each other. There's just one line that kind of goes in between them. That's called a linear pair. So five and six linear pair, two and four vertical. Hey guys, if this video helped you study for your first semester final in geometry, please help me out by liking this video down below. Then also you might find this video to be interesting as you keep studying for your first semester final in geometry.